And by the way, just, just for the record, while Scott or Stewart is coming down, I blame the State Office of Election 100% for this fiasco. Okay, 100%. Thank you. Mr. Maeda, please, yes, thank you, sir. Identify yourself. Stuart Maeda, the county clerk. Okay. Sir, would you, um, you don't have to go through all the details of the primary because we've heard it, okay? But the, my concern is what are we going to do on the general to make sure this doesn't happen again in view of the fact that we have a lava flow and we're still in hurricane season, so we don't know what's going to happen between now and then. Well, uh, for the precincts that are affected by the lava fold, that would be um, precincts 0402, which is Kionipoko, 0403, which is the Poha, Pohoa High School, and 0404, which is the Pohoa Community Center. We had mailed out uh, letters to all of those registered voters. There were 7,542 registered voters, informing them that um, they, and also having a seasonal absentee ballot available for them, application available for them. So if they um, wanted to apply for a seasonal absentee ballot, they could apply. They could use a temporary address. It wouldn't affect uh, the district in which they voted in, because we understand that people may be relocating. And uh, they, would, they would all have that opportunity. Anyone can request for a absentee ballot and vote absentee, um, but we're not doing an all male um, absentee ballot for those for those precincts. Um, we are going to open an early uh, walk-in polling site at Nanavali. That's going to be from um, October 21st until um, October 31st, which is the regular walk-in uh, voting uh, early voting sites site uh, times, um, and that's going to be done in Nanavali. Um, we are also working with the State Office of Elections to figure out um, as the general election gets closer and what is happening with the flow, we would like to try to keep the precincts all open and um, have them be able to go to their precincts. But if for whatever reasons um, one of those precincts are affected, then we're going to be looking at consolidating precincts so that there still would be walk-in voting that day, but maybe not at that precinct. If the precincts and the accessibility are all um, as they are today, then we would like to hold the election as it would normally be held. So those are the things that we're doing in preparation for the lava flow. Um, we also are down at the informational um, center. We've been down there since the 17th, although we're going to kind of scale back because um, there hasn't been a lot of activity. And then um, we're in touch with administration. So when uh, there's more activity or more need, we will go down again and uh, station people at the informational center just to let them know about absentee, give them the absentee applications if they're interested. Um, just stay in touch with State Office of Elections and Civil Defense. Uh, Civil Defense was very helpful throughout the whole or deal with the storm, and they are likewise um, very receptive to working with us um, in the general election. So we've got three precincts, and if the road is cut off, those three pre precincts would be diverted to a, a consolidated Nanavali location. Well, no, um, we have early walking voting. Oh, absentee uh, absentee walk at Nanavali at the okay. community center. Um, we cannot create a new precinct, um, but we can consolidate. So we're going to look at consolidating if, um, not necessarily if access is cut off by, by I mean by um, Highway 130 being uh, no longer usable, but if one of those polling places is inundated with lava or something happens to one of the polling places, then of course we're going to have to consolidate. But if access to 130 is cut off and we can still use the alternate access routes, we intend to leave those polling places open um, and just have our staff and take our equipment and all of our supplies out through the um, access roads that are available. Okay. One of the issues that was a problem was because the storm took down all the electrical that we couldn't get TV, newspaper, radio, internet, everything was shut down. It, unless we get another storm like that, we probably will have electricity going through the district. But um, some of the things that Mr. Nago had suggested and got chastised for severely at the state you were there 
was putting up banners on the highways when nobody could get out of their subdivisions to even see them. So I don't want a repeat of that. That's what I'm trying not to get. And flyers were sent home with school children, but of course if you didn't have children in the school, you wouldn't have gotten notification. Um, flyers posted in public areas, but people were still trapped in their subdivision. It just went on and on and on. It was like there was just no concept at the state level what we were dealing with. And frankly, at the state level, Mr. Nago blamed civil defense for telling him the precincts were open. Well, the precincts were open in a couple of places, but everybody else was trapped. So it was just a complete fiasco at the state level as to understanding how bad the situation was on the ground. I don't want it to happen again. So I appreciate what you're telling me, but when I look at these methods of notifying people, it failed, it failed about 100% um, here um, because of the people being trapped. So um, if we are cut off from electricity for whatever reason, hurricane or the lava flow, what other methods are you going to use other than the uh, informational location that you're going to hand out absentee uh, ballot things well f in regards to um powers power issues for the precincts um we did have the assistance of civil defense they did um have generators stationed all over the islands at various different fire departments so if we lost power to any of those precincts we could use those generators to power up again so that voting could continue and um ge uh, civil defense would uh, would assist us in that way again if it was a power issue. Um, the difficulty in getting the word out was that we had a very short period of time to prepare for the makeup election and um, we were looking at the best ways to try to get the word out to folks. Um, myself and the deputy clerk even went down to VAVA and um, hand, handed out um, informational flyers so that the people down there which w w who are very isolated would know um, I and by the time the um, election the makeup the continued primary occurred um, the roads are fairly accessible at that point throughout the subdivisions I drove I drove there I was driving through those subdivisions when we went down there and so there was uh, good accessibility there was a lot of movement around um, those areas from from my driving down there myself. So um, I, I know it was a d very difficult situation, but I think everyone tried to do the best they could. Um, we were w working with um, kind of sketchy information at times, especially the day after um, uh, the storm had hit. Uh, when we were at the EOC, the Emergency um, Operations Center, on Friday after the storm was hit, it was real difficult because Civil Defense, National Guard, and the Fire Department were all not allowed to fly, so we couldn't get a good assessment of how bad the damage was. We really didn't know how bad the damage was at that point in time uh, on the Friday before the general election was going to happen. And, um, you know, we were... In the past, uh, d during times when, for example, Kau was cut off several elections ago because of weather, um, helicopters flew in with our equipment and ballots and the election went on. No? So in a case of um, uh, Lower Puna getting cut off, we could do the same where we could fly in all of our equipment, all of our things, so that those folks that are trapped there could still vote, um, and we could get we could get um, our equipment down, and we could get the ballots back. And again, civil defense and fire um, would assist us in that area. So uh, there there is some precedent for when areas are isolated, what can happen. Thank you. The last t these are just comments. If we were to have another storm like Isel. Um, I would like to see you advocate for holding the makeup election 14 days later, not six. I'm asking you to do that. And the other, the other thing is, um, uh, in Nanavali as a walk-in, has that always been a walk-in uh, early voting precinct? Uh, no, it has not. Okay. The one thing that we, uh, that I was always told by Ms. Nakamoto was that one of the reasons we don't have walk-ins in more areas is you have to have a safe, like at a bank or a credit union, that will take the ballot boxes and hold them in the safe so that they're safe. 
Okay. And I, does Nanavali have some place where those boxes are going to be, the equipment's going to be locked up? Uh, there is a secure place, but we're also going to be removing the cards every night. So, and the precinct uh, captain there will be taking um, the card with him so that um, that would be secured. And that's, the, that's how the ballots are counted. That, it's gives, a, it's that gives me a case of nerves thinking about those cards coming in and out and being damaged in some way and the, the votes lost. Anyway, your issue. Thank you. I'm yielding. How, who decided that we were not going to do the mail-in ballot? I mean, when that went out, how did it switch to the seven days? Who, who switched that? Is that the state or is that the county? That's the state telling us that we had to um, do that. I mean, I can just remember people coming to me way up at Kohala and like, why are we doing this? Um, and and also hearing about that people in these other precincts weren't being able to vote. I mean, I, you know, I'm not sure how I'm hearing things. And then I hear you say we didn't have this information. So maybe I'm just confused. So I just want to um, clarify just and, and maybe I don't know, Senator Rutterman, if you have anything to say on that or just it'll enlighten me. Um, well, when the decision was made to By who? Uh, state office of elections um, in regards to the all mail because they issued the proclamation, we had we give them input. Civil defense gave them input, and we all we all give our input to state office of elections about what the circumstances are. And when the decision was to postpone that election, um, it was. It was uh, the decision was to do it at all mail, and the reason was because at that point in time, that was the Friday before the election was going to occur, that those precincts were closed and postponed. At that time, the conditions were unknown as far as how long it would take to clear roads, what was going to happen, um, w w w you know, right. what kind of infrastructure problems there were. So it was just unknown. Um, on the Monday after the election, which was the 11th, uh, we had a discussion with civil defense, with the state office of elections, and at that point in time, the major roads had been cleared, and the subdivision roads were in the process of being cleared in those areas, because we could only look at the um, precincts that were postponed. We couldn't look at the Nanavali or the lower Why? area. Cause there Why not? Because the law does not allow that. The, um, a state law says you can't look at other because the election other areas that were open, but but voter nobody could get to. Yeah, them. because they had not been postponed before the polls were open. Once the polls were open, the election needed to go on, and the um, the law does not allow us to just make changes at that point in time already. So once the polls were open on that Saturday morning for those precincts, there was not much that could be done. The only thing was that the governor could um, do a proclamation to extend the hours for those polling sites, but that would not have solved that problem. And so that's the dilemma we were in. And in hindsight, if we knew the conditions in those areas, um, we would have probably made the recommendation to close those polling places as well. But when we, when we were assessing on the morning after the hurricane, we were assessing our precincts and to make sure they were accessible, to make sure that we could have an election in those precincts. And the two precincts that were inaccessible were HPP and the Keone Poco uh, precincts. Okay. And that's why those were postponed. So what happened on Monday was when it was clear from civil defense that the roads were being cleared and throughout the rest of that week more of the roads would be cleared, um, then the decision had been made to do an uh, uh, open a polling place and hopefully we would have been able to open both polling place but unfortunately that did not occur. Um, and the reason why the decision was to open a polling place was because that more closely resembled the experience that all of the other voters had on election day and that's the <coughs> basic election philosophy and so that's why that recommendation was made at that point when the recommendation was made for 
or the decision was made to open a polling place, it had to be done within seven days because that's what HRS requires. And so that's what we were left with to deal with. Um, just as some background, you know, um, after um, Hurricane Iniki hit Kauai, their election was held eight days later. Um, Hurricane Andrew in Florida, theirs was held a week after Hurricane Andrew. Um, when 9-11 uh, hit, which was, you know, the one of the m most major um, events in our history, uh, they held the, the, they were supposed to vote on that day and they postponed their election for two weeks. And so it's sort of consistent with what happened here with what has happened previously and nationally. And that's part of why those decisions were made.